So here we have the Lockheed SC-130 Sea Hercules. This is a modification of the Italeri C-130J kit. I've used the Bren Gun slash Attack Squadron resin C-130J engines because the Italeri kit has undersized engines. It's a very strange kit this. It looks like Italeri tried to correct some of the problems with the kit by decals. However, the actual kit and the raised panel lines are in completely the wrong place. So it kind of doesn't work. So what makes a Sea Hercules an SC-130 into a Sea Hercules? Well, if we look underneath, if I take the stand off, we have a radar. This one is from an NH-90. Other radars are available, but the Sea Hercules is designed as a low-cost, long-range, low-level maritime patrol aircraft. It was suggested as a contender for various maritime patrol aircraft programs, but they all seem to go to the P-8 Poseidon. Strange that. Lockheed kicked up because uh, they didn't get any of the contracts. It has a forward-looking infrared. The actual full Sea Hercules um, can have extended sponsons, uh, sponsons sorry, on the side for torpedoes, or they can just lob them and the sonar boys out the back, as I've chosen to do here. So underneath, we have a joint strike missile. That's brand new in service. And then on the other side, we have some brimstones. So the brimstones will deal with... Um, sort of small attack craft, small ships, and also land attack. And the JSM will deal with uh, larger ships. It's a good anti-ship um, missile. Um, we have, uh, I've added some chaff and flares from uh, Raphael Extra Transfers. I've added the directed infrared countermeasures system there. I've added a, a MAD or magnetic anomaly detector boom from a Viking, an S3 Viking kit, which I have. Um, and there we go. And I finished it with the Totodile Squadron markings. And it's on a Butler's printed model stand with eight millimeter wide by two millimeter magnets. So there we go. The Lockheed SC-130 Sea Hercules fully fit.